All right. The section I'm working on now is the aileron bell crank connection system. Uh, basically, this is the uh, torque tube that attaches from the controls at the root of the wing to the bell crank for the aileron, which then connects to another rod that actually goes out to the aileron itself. Uh, so this is all part of that mechanism. The kit comes with two six foot long aluminum tubes and you cut them down to size, one for the left, one for the right. And then you put the rod ends on each end of the push tube, and then, or torque tube, I'm sorry. And then uh, the other part, that's where it'll connect with this bell crank on one end of this. And then the other end will attach to the rod, which will go to the actual aileron. Now to do this, it has a piece of paper that you cut out and you tape it to the ends. And it's gonna have little targets, but every, uh, it has six different targets on there that you'll center punch. And then you'll use the center punch as a guide for your number 40 drill bit. And that's going to enable you to drill the hole into this and the rod end uh, to put in the uh, blind rivets to hold everything together. Once you get all that put in and you put the bearings, everything assembled, then that's, that's, that's it. It's a simple piece. Uh, the next piece that you will work on is the actual rod that goes from the bell crank to the aileron. And ultimately it's going to look like this. Um, again, it's, this is a steel tube, um, half inch diameter. And you basically line everything up with the end rod ends on this again, rivet everything in place to hold the rod ends together and then you put the rod bearings on the end of this. So this will attach to the bell crank, and then this end will attach to the aileron itself. So as the bell crank moves, it'll move the aileron. So that's what I'm working on now. Um, we'll go through a couple steps here and uh, get as far as we can before I have to head out of here for a, a, a meeting I gotta get to. We'll see how this goes. And with that, welcome back. It's been about a week since I put out my last video and I uh, want to take a moment real quick to say thanks to those who continue to watch these videos. Uh, recently had a landmark uh, achievement, I guess, if you want to call it that, for me anyway. Uh, just uh, reached 100 viewers on this YouTube channel and uh, right around uh, 4,700 views altogether. Uh, in the world of the YouTube land, that's not a lot. I realize that. But uh, for me, I appreciate it. That means that there's at least 100 folks who at some point... Uh, decided they wanted to see some of these videos and so I appreciate that for those that continue to watch these I appreciate it and uh, hopefully this is uh, at least entertaining and maybe uh, a little bit uh, educational for some folks to kind of help you realize that this is uh, not that difficult of a task um, I've had several folks ask me you know one what got me to decide to do this and two how difficult is it um, the first answer is I, I love to fly. I love aviation. Uh, I have since I was a kid. I uh, got my private pilot license about two years ago, and uh, my grandfather-in-law built his own airplane and kind of got me interested in doing the same thing. So here I am. And so the second question, how difficult is this? It's, it's as simple as putting a, a puzzle together. It's it's uh, learning a few mechanical things, uh, how to rivet, things like that. But all in all, it's essentially just putting pieces together. And uh, it's a lot easier than one would think, at least to this point. So uh, here I am, uh, as I said in the introductory part of this video, I'm attaching and creating all of the aileron actuation pieces. Um, you have this piece that I'm working on, the torque tube, which will go from the actuator at the root of the wing, which you'll see in the next video. Goes to a bell crank uh, about three quarters of the way down the, the uh, wing, which then uh, attaches to a rod that connects to the aileron, as I described. So this is just the, the process of putting all of these pieces together. And this is kind of one of the more, uh, not one of the glamorous steps, it's just one of the the me mechanisms that you assemble that will never really be seen. Some of the issues that I ran across in this, um, the rivets that are called out here, they aren't the easiest to use. Um, the the rivet gun that I have just wouldn't grab hold of them very well. Um, other than that, 
the instructions have you prime the inside of all of these components and there's only so much you can prime with a rattle can i'm not sure exactly how they intended for you to to prime the entire inside of this torque tube or of the rod that goes out to the aileron but i did as best i can but other than that the rest of this is fairly simple it's just a matter of uh, assembling everything and then taking measurements to ensure that the bearings are in the correct location and the instructions tell you all of the reference points for all of that and then just putting it all together so up to this point um, put all the torque tube together now it's time to work on the connecting rod from the bell crank to the aileron itself now the torque tube was an aluminum tube this is a steel tube and unfortunately i apparently need to invest in some new saw blades um, both for my bandsaw and for my hacksaw it it was a beast trying to cut this tube this steel tube um, i'm pretty sure all of the blades on my bandsaw are now dull and worn down to the bitter end and the same thing with my hacksaw so i'm gonna have to go buy some more blades but essentially it's it's not much different than the torque tube in that you cut it to size you then uh, look at the, the instructions will tell you specific points to drill holes for where you're eventually going to rivet the ends in place and that's what you see me doing there using my um, I keep calling it a, a micrometer but it's not uh, using that measuring tool there <laughs> I'll learn the names of these things eventually um, to measure from the end of the tube to the specific point that the instructions call using my center punch and then uh, drilling pilot holes. Now, one step that you don't see me do in this video is I actually drove down to my hangar where my Cherokee is at, and my hangar buddy has a magnetic base that you can use when you're uh, using a drill press, and it's very, very handy. Uh, basically, it's, it's a magnet that you can turn on and off, and it's got a V notch in it, so you can set a pipe in there, turn the magnet on while it's on the base of the drill press, and it holds everything in place for you so you can drill a hole straight through the tube so that it's a straight hole the, you know the holes are aligned so you can put a bolt or in this case a rivet straight through uh, so that's what i did before i i got to this point here and then uh, once you get the pilot uh, pilot holes drilled with that technique then you come back and you upsize it and uh, i believe Initially, it was a uh, number 40, and then you upsize it to a 30, I believe, for the rivets. And that's what you saw me doing there. And then again here, I'm trying to prime the inside of that tube. Not very effective, but it's an attempt. So then the next step is to put the ends in place where the bearings will screw onto. And they're a very tight fit. I actually had to very carefully um use the the 3m wheel to um kind of polish away some of the surface so i could get it into the steel tube it was a very tight uh, very tight fit and that's what you want obviously um but once you got in place then you drill it out uh, size it up correctly again this is a number 30 so that i can put the rivets in place and then the rivets the these are the long rivets it, it goes all the way through this half inch tube and so you want to be very careful when you're going to squeeze these. Uh, essentially, you'll see me here in a minute uh, squeezing your, these rivets in place. And what I did here is that the initial squeeze was just a very small amount. It was, um, I, I used the spacers and I created the spacers just so they squeezed it a little bit to kind of set it in place. Um, I, I wanted to make sure that it was held in place by the rivet itself you know it was squeezed just enough to hold it in place before i really went for the full um setting of the rivets uh, my my fear was since the tube is is hollow that if i went for the full uh squeeze from you know initially that the portion of the rivet that's inside the hollow tube would bend and i wouldn't get a, a good solid rivet so i just wanted to squeeze it to try to get it to kind of uh, grab hold of the sidewalls of the of the tube before it really started setting. Um, I'm not sure if that really works, but it seemed to be a good idea in my mind. 
And that is the rod that goes from the bell crank to the aileron. It's all complete. The things you wanted to make sure is on the torque tube, the rod end bearings are parallel to each other because they're on the same plane. On the rod from the bell crank to the aileron, they're actually 90 degrees from each other. Uh, so they're perpendicular because it, it, it's a, uh, the plane changes. And so you want to make sure you set that correctly. Now I'm working on the bell crank, the right wing bell crank, and it is slightly different. The right wing is where your, uh, your automatic autopilot sits in place. And so there's a connection on this bell crank where the arm of your autopilot will connect to when you, you put in a nut plate. And that's what you see me doing here is setting the nut plate in place. Other than that, you're just going to uh, take some measurements on the bell crank attach point where it attaches to the frame of the wing. And it tells you that there's a certain tolerance to make sure that it's it meets. And then other than that, um, it's just a matter of getting all the components together, uh, spacers and correct bolts and things like that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and let this video run out here. Um, again, uh, just putting the bell crank together and put it in the, in the uh, wing. For those that continue to watch these videos, again, I appreciate it. If you get a chance, hit that like button for me. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell and you'll get notifications anytime I put these, these videos out. Um, these are a, a fun project to put together and I'm really enjoying this, this airplane. So we'll see you next time.